a bit weird, you know what I mean? I don't know what it is. I've got a splint on my ankle now. I'm getting it looked at on Monday. Hopefully it's not too bad and I can focus on fighting still, but I don't know, I'm hoping I don't need surgery. Obviously four wins and four, you know, Christmas on the horizon. I think you've got a holiday to Thailand, uh, Thailand right? Jay, yeah. You know, how have you sum up this year given this co made event pay per view debut? It's sound, isn't it? It's been a good year. Three and all, two finishes. Just went full 15 with a very tough opponent who, as I say, he comes to fight every time, man, and he's got the cardio for 15 minutes. And I won by unanimous decision. It's all that matters. So I really, I've had a brilliant year, an absolutely brilliant year, and long may they continue. Just one for more, please. Sorry, everyone makes a big deal about the. The diet outside of camp, do you, do you really not care what you're going to do from there between the next one? You know, everyone makes up that you go almost to light heavyweight limit as you're eating a, a pizza now, I guess it is. I'll have to cook you that Oh, could be good. Do you, do you, you know, not care between uh, you just go do what you want? I don't give a flying fuck what anyone's got to say about me. I turn up on weight and shape. That's all that matters. Cheers, mate. Congrats. Patty in the front right here. Uh, you said you, you when you coasted in round three, uh, were your coaches telling you that you had won the first two rounds, or did you feel it in there that you had won? The I knew I'd won the first two. People don't have to tell me, you know what I mean? But when I've looked at the stats after the fight, I think I've won all three. In the cage, I thought that he won the third, you know what I mean? And when it said 29-28, I was like, yeah, good decision, I won the first two, he won the third. But then after looking back at the stats, four significant strikes in the third, Console time doesn't mean jack shit anymore, lad. All right. So we're immediately after you felt he had won round three, but in hindsight, you think you won all three? You, you yeah. Said. And did you say anything to him after? He seems pretty upset and seemed to leave the office. Yeah, uh, no, I spoke, spoke, spoke to him in the back. He said to me, I thought to one. I was like, lad, you one took some of a bitch. You know what I mean? You took some shots there and kept walking forward. Everyone always thinks they won, lad. I've lost two five round decision fights and I thought to won both. You know what I mean? It's that simple. But, like I said, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. The fact is, I won by unanimous decision. How are you doing, mate? Obviously, you joked with Joe Rogan about did he pay for the interview. I'm curious, was there any part of you that regretted that thing happening this week with all the comments you're getting on your Instagram and stuff like that? No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm unapologetically myself, lad. I've had that bottled up for over a year where he talks shite. I've had all bots commenting on my page. I get on with it, lad. You know what I mean? One of them. I think that's an issue that you and Aaron could have squashed, or is that just going to be behind you? I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Fighters are more important. I worry about fighters. Hey, Patty over here. Uh, just out of curiosity, first time fighting in front of a full arena in the United States for the UFC. Just what was that experience? You know what you bring in the UK. What was it like to feel that knowing you're in a completely different country? I felt bad for Jared when he walked out and got booed, to be honest. I did, I felt bad for Jared because he's a nice, very nice man. He didn't deserve to get booed, but it just shows how good my fans are and what star power I've got. That walkout was spectacular. That's up there with the O2, you know what I mean? And the Echo Arena and Liverpool. That was special. Lovely walkout. I know you're going on vacation. If Jake Paul hits you up for that sparring session, are you still down or what are your thoughts? Lad, I'm gonna have to get me foot looked at before I do anything. <laughs> that goes without saying, lad. Uh, Jared Gordon, was that the, do you think, the, the toughest fighter you've faced so far in your career? Yeah, probably. He, give it, as I say, lad, he's one tough son of a bitch. The man's had a golf club put over his head and a baseball bat put over his head and hasn't went down. But I, I've hit him with some punches there. Like, I think at the end of the second, if I wouldn't have poked by accident, obviously, if I wouldn't have got in, got in his eye, I think I would have finished him there, because I had him rocked. But it's one of them, lads, you know what I mean? I'm glad I've done a full 15 in the UFC against another athlete that I know can go 15 minutes easy. And I know for a fact that I won the fight. So, as I said, the other facts. And how was fight week for you this week without Having, uh, having Molly alongside you. The last few UFC fights for you, the pair of you have been on the same card. Has it been a slightly different dynamic? Is it not the same having Molly there with you? Fight to fight, lad. We turn off to scrap. You know what I mean? I, I'm always going to have this media and this big bubble around me whenever I turn up to fight because 
I put a lot of expectations on my shoulders, the way I talk. But I talk the talk and then I walk the walk. Assuming you're fit and good to go early in the new year, I know previously you said you wanted to go over to Vegas and fight in the States. Would fighting on that London card, given that it's a big pay-per-view, would that be something you'd be up for? Maybe co-main under that, that title fight with Leon and uh, Kamara? As my man said, I've got an oldie booked in uh, Thailand in January, but I'm not just a fighter now, lad, I'm a businessman. I've got a few business businesses that I'm open up and a few things that I've invested in. So I'm not just a fighter now, lad. I've got to worry about some of my investments. So I, I don't know. We'll see. All right, and last one for me. You mentioned, you mentioned uh, your outside interests, outside of the fight. Tell us about this foundation you put together. Well, yeah, I've put, uh, put together the Body Foundation and I just want to try and give back, you know what I mean, and help people who get forgotten about. So, kids in the UK, we were eating off food banks and I got one out in their school uniform on a Saturday and Sunday because we haven't got clothes. I want to try and help people like that and then obviously, men's mental health is a big thing to me now after, in my city, there's an epidemic at the minute of people killing themselves, young men. So, I just want to help give back and, as I said earlier, I want to help Jared. Jared's such a good man and he helps his community so much. So, I want to work together with Jared and put some funds together with him and help some of the charities that he works with in his local community because he does so much for them and you know we was enemies for 15 minutes but we'll be friends for a lifetime. Jason, thank you. Jared uh, just tweeted a few minutes ago saying you know I was robbed and everyone knows it. There's a few other fighters who have tweeted out like worst decision in UFC history and things along those lines. Um, why do you feel that maybe the outsider perspective is really so far against you as far as how this fight unfolded? Because I'm me, lad. It's just because it's me. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know what you're saying. Who else said that? Who else thought he would? Any idea? Uh, there's a lot. Well, if you like kind of look over fellow fighters on Twitter, you know, Dominic Cruz said he thought it was a, a terrible one. People called it embarrassing. I was sitting next to Dominic Cruz before and we spoke about it and I said to him, control time means nothing. Damage. Look at my face, look at Jared's. I, I don't care what anyone says, lad. When you look back in the history books, I've got the little green marker next to my name with a W. So everyone else can suck me arsehole. Hey Paddy, um, you and Ili have had a bit of needle this week and um, you said earlier in this room that the judges uh, gave you a Christmas gift with the decision. Yeah. <laughs> you got a response to that? No. Hand sanitizer, boy, you can keep using my name for some football steals you want. Is um, the best way for this war of words for him to be buried with a fight between you both in the future at some point? It could happen, you know what I mean? He looked good tonight, give him his due. He looked good tonight, he did. Bryce did rock him now in the second round. And I am a lot bigger than both of them. You know what I mean? So, that could happen in the future, but as I say, I don't know when I'm going to be fighting now. I've got to get this ankle looked at. And if I was him, like, well, he's in the top 10 in the featherweight division now, isn't he? You know what I mean? He's just beat yeah. number nine. Yeah. Yeah. That just shows how I live in his head rent free. You know what I mean? He's still talking about me, even though he's in the top 10 in featherweight. If I was him, I'd be asking for number 5 or something. But he's asking for the body, because he knows who the fucking boy is. Um, I know you said earlier that you don't give a fuck about what people say or think when it comes to the weight game, but considering Ricky, Ricky Hatton, uh, who also went up and down in weight between camps, retired... He was also a world champion, though, weren't he? Yeah, but if he retired at 28, is the weight game... Did he retire at 28? That was his first retirement, yeah, and then he came back and lost to Senchenko at... 33 or so. I didn't know he retired at 28. Like, I'm 28 in about three weeks, lad. Do you think I'm retiring in three weeks? Not 28, but do you, think <laughs> do you think it's conducive to career? No, no. I do DEX scans and stuff when I'm going into fights, lad. My RMR doesn't go down, you know what I mean? I do this scientifically. I don't cut big amounts of weight. The top end of the division cut more weight than me. I cut 10 pounds yesterday. I think like Makachev and Poirier and Oliveira and Gagey all cut more than £10 overnight. Easily. Well done, Thank you, bro. Thank you, Paddy. Thank you, Paddy. Anyone else?
Now, peace out, bitches.